Hey everyone, thanks for joining us tonight for um, another COVID webinar. Uh, today we're talking about the 2021 youth, U.S. Rowing Youth National Regatta COVID protocols. Um, I know a lot of you guys have been on these webinars for other events, um, but I really appreciate you guys joining in for this one as well. Um, so we can go ahead and go over some of the key details for this event too. Uh, before I go ahead and get started, um, my, my name is Sarah McAuliffe, if you haven't met me before, and Brett Johnson is also on this call. Brett is our COVID officer for this regatta, um, and it will be really good to answer some of your detailed questions here. Um, but some housekeeping items. So if you do have any questions, go ahead and put them in the Q&A. Uh, we'll stay out of the chat as much as possible, and it'll be best for us to monitor it in the Q&A. Um, this is being recorded, and we'll post it tomorrow morning. Um, along with the slides. So then you'll be able to distribute it to your families and spectators, um, athletes and coaches and support staff as well. And then on top of this too, um, so like I said, I know you guys have been, or many of you have been in on these. Um, please wait till the end. There are many additional details that you haven't seen before at other events. Um, so it's super important you pay close attention to this one. Um, and also too, while this, this webinar will go over the majority of the details in the packet, um, what we really want uh, is for everyone to go ahead and read the actual COVID packet um, post this event or if you haven't done so already. So there's many details in the packet that are still 100% pertinent to this event that you might not see tonight, but we're going to try and cover everything. So just a quick agenda of what we're going to go over tonight is one, how safety is the number one goal and how we came to these um, protocols, going over the testing protocols, your COVID officer responsibilities, how to submit your team roster and results, registration and what to expect leading up to the event. We're gonna get, go over a review of the venue layout. We'll talk about face masks, safety off the venue, um, additional safety notes, and then spectators, and then any questions you may have. So to start it all off, um, again, thank you for being here and your patience as we um, kind of navigate these crazy times and be as flexible as possible with the forever changing guidelines. Um, so leading up to this event, as you know, we've done all our regional events with these protocols in place. Some have been um, more strict than others due to the areas that they are taking place in. Um, but we've, you know, they've worked really, really well. And we really appreciate everybody who has attended those events for um, keeping safety as the, as the number one priority. Uh, but coming into these, we've met with the U.S. Rowing Medical Commission quite a bit. Um, we've talked with, you know, for the CDC guidelines, we talked with the IRA, Big 12, NCAA guidelines, and various other regatta committees um, to come up with these guidelines, which we feel are the safest to keep um, athletes, coaches, spectators, and any support staff as safe as possible so they can row this year. So to jump right in, I'm going to go ahead into testing protocols. Um, so testing, pro testing is 100% required for anyone that is involved in the athlete, spectator, or essential staff area if they are not fully vaccinated. So we are splitting up this venue into two different, um, two different venues or two different bubbles, I'd say. And so one area is where all the athletes, the coaches, and the support staff are, and that is where testing or being fully vaccinated is required. And the other half of the venue is where the spectators will be, where you don't need to be tested for it. Um, so what I'm talking about right now is where the athletes, the coaches, and the support staff are. Um, so if you are not vaccinated and being fully vaccinated means it's been two weeks after the last shot. So whether it's um, the Pfizer or Moderna, the two weeks after your second shot or the two weeks after the one dose of Johnson & Johnson, um, so everybody else that's going into this area must either be fully vaccinated or um, COVID tested prior to arriving. Tests will be coordinated by each individual team. So U.S. Rowing is not monitoring and not organizing um, a, a group that you must go through or scheduling times where you must go through them. Um, it is on the team and the team's designated COVID officer to 100% monitor that. Each team will go ahead and designate one person to be the team designated COVID officer. And that person will be in charge of really to ensure compliance amongst the entire regatta for their team. Um, and I'll go into more details in the next few slides on what exactly that looks like. Again, all tests must be administered no more than 72 hours prior to arrival. Um, so that means for the home team, or I'm sorry, for, for everybody, that means that by June 8th, everybody needs to be tested by. 
for the home team by June 8th, everybody needs to be tested by then. Um, if you are not the home team, then all of the tests must be conducted by June 9th, no later than 5 p.m. If an athlete does test positive, it's the responsibility of the team designated COVID officer to then do all of the contact tracing. Um, and then they will go ahead and alert US rowing if any boats need to be scratched. So COVID officer responsibilities, what are those? Um, again, each team is designated their own COVID officer. And this person can be the head coach. It can be um, a parent who's volunteered. It, it can be anyone who the team um, feels is organized enough and will be with the team on site. That person must be with the team, um, must be on site for the entirety of the event. So their responsibility, again, is to ensure COVID compliance for the entirety of the event for team, coaches, and support staff. Uh, the COVID officer is also responsible for conducting the daily symptom survey. And so that's something that the COVID officer does on their own time each morning with the team. That is never being reported to US Rowing. We are not seeing individual results. We are just seeing that, yes, you guys have completed this and they include all of these questions right here. Um, and then the COVID officer signs off that it's been completed and that person has been cleared for, this, for these um, symptom survey questions. The most important one that we've added, um, so if you're in one of the early regional events, we temperature checked um, everybody as they walked through the door. That is one difference going into youth nationals. Um, there will not be temperature checks at the door, but it has been added to your symptom survey. So it is up to the COVID officer to conduct that temperature check. Therefore, the athlete and the COVID officer signs off that the temperature is not above 100.4 degrees. And then therefore that athlete passes the symptom survey for the day. Uh, the COVID officer is also responsible for collecting each athlete, coaches, and support staff's testing results or vaccination records. Um, so that means U.S. Rowing is never receiving all of those documents. Um, I don't need an email with everybody's um, COVID test or vaccination proofs. I just need the COVID officer to then therefore send me those two pieces of paper, which I'll go into at the end of this, um, verifying that, yes, the COVID officer has everything in their hand, whether it's digitally, whether it's um, paper copies, and then they have therefore signed off that everybody has followed the bigger document. Um, I will say we will, if something comes up where a, a problem has occurred or, or there's been multiple scenarios where we need to double check um, that the team is compliant, US Rowing would then ask to audit the team and then that would be necessary for the team to provide um, all of the supporting documents. Um, again, if that's, if that's done digitally in a Google Drive, that's totally fine. You don't need to print out everything. Um, another thing, so the COVID officer is contact tracing. Once again, that is not on US rowing. We are not the ones that will be calling your teams and contact tracing for you. If somebody does test positive within that 72 hour um, window or prior to even, even coming to the venue, um, then therefore the COVID officer will be in charge of doing all that contact tracing and then alerting US rowing with what that um, lineup change or boat change would be. And then finally, the COVID officer is in charge of distribution of credentials. Um, so I'll go into what it looks like when you arrive on site, but the COVID officer is the one that will see us at the registration tent. Um, and then you guys will go ahead and distribute to your entire team the credentials. I'll note too, before we get into anything, this credential is something that stays with the athlete, with the coach or with the support staff for the entirety of the event. So at no point in time, is the credential coming off at no point in time is um, the credential, you're not getting a new credential each day. It's the same exact one for every person throughout the entirety of the event. So this is one of the documents that you guys will submit, the COVID officer will submit prior to coming on site. Um, it's the 2021 Youth Championship team roster. So this team roster must be filled out with every single person that is coming into the athlete area. And that is, I'll show you on a map in just a little bit, um, but that's anybody that is athlete, coach, or support staff. They must be on this roster and they must be on this roster and in our inbox um, prior to arriving on site. So at no point in time when you're on site, can you add somebody to your roster? Everybody, once again, must be on this way prior to, um, prior to arriving on site. And then that is the list that we're going by. And that is the list that we are pr uh, printing your credentials for. So once again, all, including support staff, they must be on this list right here. So registration, what to expect. Uh, when you arrive on site, all your paperwork, um, before arriving on site, all your paperwork will again be in our inbox. 
So you will have sent me that roster right there, which has everybody's name. And it says, yes, this person is either vaccinated or has taken a COVID test within 72 hours. Um, and then on top of that, you will have sent me the sign off of the COVID document. So on the very last page of the COVID document, the COVID officer must sign off and say, yes, this team has been fully compliant. And I sign off that we have done all of the steps in this um, packet right here. So when you arrive on site, you're gonna go ahead and approach the registration tent. Um, and you're gonna also provide a paper copy of those two documents. Um, again, they are sent to me no later than 5 p.m. on June 9th. So that is the cutoff date and when it needs to be sent in digitally. But then the COVID officer is again, bringing those paper copies to the tent for a backup copy. Once the check-in has occurred um, and it is the team is completely COVID compliant, there's no other issues. They're 100% US rowing membership compliant um, and have paid all dues then I will go ahead or Brett will go ahead and give you um, your credentials. Again, you're immediately um, bringing those back to your team. Um, you are in charge of distributing them. Your athletes could not get into the athlete area at this venue until they have that credential. So it's super important that the COVID officer is coming to the venue first. They're picking up all the credentials, making sure all the ducks are in the row, and then either going back to the bus or going back to the hotel um, and giving the athletes their credentials. If a kid shows up, if they're arriving on their own, they won't be allowed into the team athlete area. The coach will have to come out, give the credential to the athlete, and then the coach can walk them back in. So we will hold athletes prior to going into that area. Once again, once they do have credentials on, um, that athlete, the team will have access to the venue at all times. Um, and volunteers will check to make sure that that is visible on them at, at all times. They won't let anybody in that is not wearing it either around their neck or around their wrist or whatever it may be. Um, one thing I want to add to is who is essential staff um, and what that number looks like. So essential staff, it is by no means spectators. It is by no means like everyone's family. It really is somebody who's 100% needed to make the, the regatta go. So whether that's your trailer driver, if that's your COVID officer, of course they're essential. Um, somebody who's, you know, helping you rig, it's a parent chaperone. Um, we've been going on the one to 15 ratio for parent chaperones. So nothing, you know, if you don't need them, please don't bring them into the athlete area. We're trying to keep it as bubble oriented as possible. Um, but if there's an athlete who has a medical condition that needs a parent there, of course, they're an essential staff um, person too. And all those people would then therefore need to be on the athlete roster. In this athlete area too, you'll see that the athletes, the coaches, and the essential staff will have a view within their area to watch racing. So at no point in time is the athlete going into the spectator area and vice versa. Um, they both, both categories will have a view and be able to watch racing. So quickly going over the venue layout here, and I apologize because I know it's kind of small, but we'll, um, we'll send a bigger copy so everybody can see it better. Um, so you'll see right here, this yellow line, and if you can follow my cursor, the, there will be fencing, um, NCAAs is the week before, so there will be fencing that will go on this yellow line, will go out this way, and then we'll essentially go straight back, blocking off everything to the left to this area as the athlete area, and everything to the right by the finish area as the spectator area. So once again, this middle line right here on the beach separates the two, we cut across, and then we go straight down. And so we will have trailers all in this area there will be no parking and we'll go into more details regarding like parking and, and other items um, later on this week so we're not going to focus on that quite too much today um, but this whole area will be the athlete area with their trailers um, and then here is where athletes coaches and essential staff will be able to view um, racing in this area too there will be no team tent rentals. So Sanka will not be providing team tent rentals. Um, in your trailer area, if there is space for you to put up a 10 by 10 pop-up tent, you are more than welcome to do so, but it must fit into your area. And then down on the beach right here, there will be very large tents um, that will be used for shade where it'll be kind of like a community gathering. Um, so there will not be individual team tents in this area by any means. There will be shade for the athletes. Um, but then if you have your own team tent that you want at your trailer where kids can eat, um, you know, any meals, they can, they can rest, it'll be within your trailer area right there. 
Um, and one item too is it must be a 10 by 10. If you need, if you can fit two 10 by 10s, that's fine. But Sanka has a rule that it cannot be a 10 by 20 because then it gets dangerous if the wind picks it up. So it must be 10 by 10. On this area too, I won't go too much into spectator um, seating on this slide, but you'll see right here, again, the spectators are all in this area. There will be grandstands. There will be some shade underneath the grandstands. Um, and then these two blocks right here are where um, food vendors could be. So in the spectator area, there's a team, des or I'm sorry, not team designated. There's a spectator designated food area. So food will not be consumed in the grandstands right here or on the beach. If you do need to eat food, you can grab a snack at the food vendors um, and eat it at picnic tables over on this end of everything. You'll also notice too that there is this white box right here. This is our admissions tent. So if you are a spectator and you have gotten your tickets, this is where you will be entering into the venue. This area right here, um, and more details will come on this, is where there will be vendors. And those vendors will get, have access to both the athlete area and the spectator area. There will kind of be both sides to it. Um, so, you know, there will be N&D doing uh, their own, uh, the event specific merchandise, which everyone should check out. And I know have been super popular at the regional events. Um, and a few other vendors that will be located right here that both the spectators and the athletes will be able to visit. So going into face mask requirements. So face masks covering both the mouth and nose are required at all times for everyone on the venue. Um, again, surgical masks are preferred, neck gaiters and bandanas are not acceptable. Um, and the only time when you are able to take off your mask is if you're eating food, um, either in the spectator designated food area, or if you're in the athlete area, you're eating your food at your trailer, or if you have a 10 by 10 pop-up tent, you can eat there as well. Um, but then those must be put back on immediately afterwards. Another scenario where somebody could take off their mask is if you are a competitor, if you are a rower, you must go down to the dock, you must launch, um, completely push away from the dock, and then the rowers in the boat can go ahead and take their masks off for the race. Um, once again, they're coming back in to the, to the uh, recovery docks. You'll go ahead and put that mask back up um, and then continue to bring your boat off the water with the mask completely up so we can make sure our referees are protected there. If you are a coxswain in an eight um, in a stern cox boat, then you will be wearing a mask and eye protection at all times. Co so coxswains cannot take off their masks in that scenario. Coxswains, again, will wear eye protection and masks. And eye protection could mean um, glasses could mean sunglasses, could mean face shields, whatever you see fit. Again, if anyone at the venue is found without a mask, they'll be asked to put it back on. Uh, then the COVID officer will get involved and the team designated COVID officer will be responsible for both the athlete area and the spectator area. And then if continues, if non-compliance continues, then the team could be excluded from competition. So it's super important. Everybody is wearing it at all times. Um, for this event, even if you are fully vaccinated, this is quite a large event. So we are keeping masks on for the entirety of it. And the same applies for the spectator area. So if you are in the spectator area, um, in the grandstands, you are also wearing a mask at all times. The only scenario where you would take it off is if you are in the food designated area eating something. So safety off the venue too. Um, so again, we're really trying to keep it as bubble-like as possible. So keeping those athletes, coaches, and essential staff really um, confined into that one area and keeping you as safe as possible in there. Um, so we have some suggestions about how to best handle this and how to keep your crews in more of a bubble-like atmosphere. Um, so you know, minimizing as much contact as possible when you're going to and from the venue, limiting as much activity as possible, really keeping it to your hotel room, um, your team designated area at the venue. And then once again, monitoring the health and wellness of your travel party at all times. So even, you know, the COVID officer is responsible of doing those daily symptom surveys, but even prior to there should be um, monitoring of the health and wellness of the entire traveling party. So some additional safety notes, again, six feet social distancing when you're with teams outside of your bubble, we're operating in team bubbles. So if you are outside of your team bubble, always six feet social distancing. Um, we're recommending everybody brings their own hand sanitizer just for extra safety. Uh, in regards to safety checks at control commission. Um, so it is the responsibility of the team to ensure the safety of all equipment. So in the COVID document, 
you are signing off as the COVID officer, verifying that yes, your boat, um, all of your equipment is 100% safe, it is following the rules of rowing, um, and, and you as a coach have checked off on all of that. There may be a scenario where the referee at Control Commission um, asks you to camp the boat and show you what the heel ties look like. There may be a scenario where the referee then asks the coxswain or a coach or a rower to go ahead and pull them down for them. Um, the referee is, we are not, you know, we don't want our referees touching all of the equipment. So we are always going to ask the rower or the individual team to go through that process. Um, but just please be flexible. The referees are there for everybody's safety and want to make sure equipment is 100% safe. So be, please be flexible as they ask you to um, continue to prove that for your equipment. For bow numbers, time trial bow numbers will be provided. Um, and then the re remaining sprint racing will be provided by you all. So everybody should bring um, a few sets of their own bow numbers. In regards to docks, so we're recommending a 30 to 40 minute launch time prior to your race. Um, on the uh, draft schedule right now that James has put up, there is a launch time where everybody, or there's a coming to the island time, and there is also a launch time too. So please refer back to that. More details to come on exactly how that will play out once James has that schedule finalized later this week. Um, but again, we're going for a rough 30 to 40 minutes before your event, making sure that there's only essential staff on the dock. Um, so don't bring the whole team, you know, one to two people to carry oars or shoes or whatever it may be, but it's, it's really as minimal as possible. And then again, a reminder, um, you must wear a mask as you're going down to the dock and you can only take it off if you are a rower and you are completely pushed away and clear from all of their boats and referees. I have a note in here about our CNC meeting. So James is gonna reach out to you guys in a little bit with that date. Um, it will also be conducted via Zoom and we'll go into more details regarding parking and things like that. And one more slide regarding spectators. So in the spectator area, once again, masks must be worn at all times unless that area is noted as a place where masks don't need to be worn. Um, so if you are a spectator that where the grandstands will be, masks must be worn at all times. Once again, food is designated, um, food must be consumed in designated food areas, so they are not being consumed on the bleachers. There are no pop-up tents in the spectator area. So on the grandstands, there will be some shade under it if you're looking for shade, but spectators cannot bring their own pop-up tents. Spectators are more than welcome to bring their own chairs um, and whatever you know, is most comfortable to you, but there can't be pop-up tents there. And once again, social distancing at all times. If you're in the VIP spectator area, which that means you are on the second floor, either inside or outside on the balcony, um, VIP spectators who are fully vaccinated may take off their masks when in the VIP spectator area only. So if you're up on that second floor, that is the only place if you are fully vaccinated that you can take off your mask. And how that'll work is you'll walk up the stairs, you'll meet our, um, our workers who are checking to make sure that you are on the list and scanning your ticket there. And then they will ask for proof. So bring a picture of your card or if you have um, one of the passports, then you can bring that as well. Um, and then they will ask for proof of your vaccination right then and there. And then we'll give you a wristband that will signal to everyone that yes, you can then go ahead and take off your mask. Um, but proof must be presented at arrival. Um, whether that's a picture of the card, that's totally fine too. Um, and the non-vaccinated VIP spectators must wear masks at all times. So your ticket, spectator ticket will just be scanned um, and then you will go ahead in and just be required to wear your mask when you're not eating or drinking. And one note in regards to spectators, I'm sure there's plenty of people asking um, if there's, when the next round of spectator tickets will be, if there will be a next round. So at this time, I can't confirm if there will be. We, of course, are under um, a limit because of COVID and we don't want to get too crazy and out of hand. Um, but I will say we are trying our absolute best. Um, and tomorrow morning, we should have more information on what we're able to do. Um, so please stay um, patient as we try and, you know, get as many people as possible on site and get you guys to see your rowers. Um, we will have a jumbotron in the spectator area. And also we will be streaming all of the sprint racing. So that will be, those will be two options too. Um, but yes, please stay patient as we get more details to you guys. Also too, if you're on this call, I know a lot of people have done this already, um, but you probably have been getting texts from us. So while you're on this call, go ahead and text hashtag youth nationals to this number right here. 
Um, and this will tell you everything and anything. So we've been sending out text alerts when ticket sales have gone on um, at the event, if anything weather related or schedule change or just, I don't know, something fun needs to come up, then we'll go ahead and text you through this. Um, but this is a super helpful tool. So I'm gonna leave this up for a little bit and Brett, if there are any questions, I can go ahead and take them. Yeah, we've got quite a few, Sarah. So uh, we'll start with how many support staff are you allowed to have? Um, we don't have a set number, uh, but the ratio has been one to 16 in terms of athletes, uh, just or support staff to athletes uh, at the previous regatta. So somewhere around that uh, is the recommendation. Uh, and that does not include coaches. Uh, what if an athlete has already had COVID? Um, if an athlete's already had COVID, uh, then number one, they have to be, they have to have been cleared to participate uh, in the event. And number two, if it's within 90 days, uh, then if it's within 90 days of a positive test for COVID, then they have to produce the test result and they have to be symptom free. And if that's the case, then they are exempt from contact tracing. Uh, can anyone be the COVID officer? Uh, anyone who is, who has access to the athlete area and is part of your team support staff can be the COVID officer. Um, so that could be uh, a support staff member, that could be a coach. Um, if you have somebody who's been doing that from home and, and running all your COVID checks and everything, and is not going to be at the venue, then you need to assign a coach or somebody else that's going to be physically on the venue to be in contact with us. Uh, so it needs to be somebody who's on the venue and who has access to the athlete area. And I'll say too, that person is the first one coming up to the desk as well to pick up all the credentials. So the COVID officer must be the one doing that. Um, I see some things popping up in the chat as well. Uh, we'll try to get to the chat questions, but if you have a question, please make sure you're putting it in the Q&A so we uh, can answer it for sure. Um, you don't expect the officer to track compliance for those who purchase a spectator ticket, do you? I have no idea who bought tickets or not. That is correct. We, uh, the COVID officer is not responsible for their spectators uh, in terms of doing any sort of uh, compliance check or anything like that. Uh, it is just the people that are on your list and in the athlete area. Uh, when do we start the symptom survey? Uh, I mean, we recommend that you start keeping track 14 days out, but in terms of actually keeping track for the regatta itself, it's as of the first day that you're on venue. So if you're practicing on Tuesday, the first day of practice, uh, then you should start your symptom survey on Tuesday. If you're not arriving to the venue until Wednesday, then you can start the uh, symptom survey on Wednesday. If a fully vaccinated, do you still take the daily temperature? Uh, yes, just to make sure. Um, there was a question about uh, audits. Sarah, maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, the audit that happened at the Northeast and, and uh, how we would be auditing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if it does come up where there's a scenario that problems continue to arise within the COVID plan for a team, then we will ask um, the COVID officer to come up and review, you know, who's on their roster, who, you know, proof of vaccination or proof of COVID testing, um, and then go through that roster with that team. Confirming if the antigen rapid test is an acceptable uh, form of testing, and yes, Mark, it is. Uh, question about team tents and tent rentals. If not, where will athletes find shade? Uh, Sarah, you can speak to tent rentals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's no tent rentals um, due to the fact that there is just simply not enough room to be socially distant with team trailers um, and, and within your team. So no tent rentals. Again, if you would like to bring your own 10 by 10 pop-up tent, you are more than welcome to do so to create some shade at your trailer but it must be a 10 by 10. If you want multiple 10 by 10s and it fits, that's great. But again, Sanka rules, it needs to be a 10 by 10 so it doesn't create danger. Um, there will be big 10s, 40 by 40 big 10s um, on the beach in the athlete area uh, where kids can go ahead, where athletes, kids and um, essential staff can go ahead and watch the racing down there. So there will be shade, um, but it will not be individualized. 
and those will be open aired and uh, obviously we will also be enforcing the uh, uh, social distancing, six feet social distancing within those tents. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do trailer drivers trailer drivers get their credentials if they arrive one or two days before the COVID officer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if the trailer driver is coming in early, that is totally fine. You are able to go ahead, um, set your trailer up as we've done at other regionals, park your trailer, and then you'll go ahead and move off site. So do what you have to do to set up your space. Um, if you know if that's take a boat off or two or, or set up a 10 by 10 that's totally fine um, but it's the expectation that once you are done with that setup then you're going back off site and you're not coming back on until um, your COVID officer is there and gives you your credential so that is one person who should absolutely be essential staff and on that team roster uh, in the packet under registration and accreditation, it says all names of the traveling party must be provided to U.S. Rowing by May 26th in order to have credentials printed and be ready for registration. Who do we send that list to, and is it actually May 26th? Um, I can answer that, Brett. Um, yeah, so that one is going to be done by James. So please, I know that was a little bit confusing. So yes, it's important that we pr print the credentials, um, but you will be getting a separate email from James going over that roster. Um, where we can do that. So please, two separate items right there. We have the COVID list and yes, they should, they will match up in the end, um, but your COVID list should be completely a separate document than this March or May 26th roster. Um, I'll also note too that some of you guys have been very, um, I guess, eager with sending those emails of getting your roster and your signed document. However, there shouldn't be any rosters complete until it has been 100% confirmed that all of your athletes have either been vaccinated or they have um, tested negative. So if there's a scenario where there's a team out there, where, which I hope there is, um, but if there's a team that has fully vaccinated participation on their team roster, that's a scenario where you can go ahead and send that roster in. But if there's anybody on your team that needs to be that team roster, then please hold off and sending that team roster until every single person has um, done that COVID test and you can firmly sign off that yes, um, everybody has tested negative. So once again, I shouldn't receive any of those until 72 hours prior to the event starting unless you are a fully vaccinated team. Uh, next question, are sunglasses considered eye protection for coxswains? Um, and I hate to be kind of wishy-washy on this, but it depends is the answer. Um, I would suggest going to the CDC site under eye protection, and it talks about, uh, you know, wraparound sunglasses versus uh, different types of eye protection. So uh, some sunglasses may be considered eye protection for coxswains, others may not. Uh, so I would suggest going to the CDC site and, and reading their literature on, on eye protection. Uh, based on the venue explanation and viewing races, will coaches be allowed to follow by bike on the other side? They will, yes, absolutely. So the bike vendor will be available um, only to coaches. So that, that will not be available to spectators. It'll be in the athlete area. You'll be able to rent a bike there. And yes, there will be availability to go around to the other side and bike. Uh, there's a question about the at-home COVID test and yes, those are acceptable. Um, a couple questions about uh, vaccinated people still having to mask in an outdoor environment. Uh, the answer to that is yes. Uh, and the reason behind that is because this is a large scale event and we're expecting uh, a few thousand people to be on the island at the same time. So we just want to be uh, using the utmost of caution around that. We have people who won't be vaccinated. Uh, we'll have people that will be vaccinated. We'll have people that are, uh, you know, have had their first shot but haven't had their second shot. So just in an abundance of caution, we want to keep the masking uh, the masking rules in place for this regatta. Mm -hmm. uh, are spectators allowed on the other side of the island and can we have tents? Uh, we do not control the other side of the island. Um, there will be no amenities on the other side of the island. So I know some people who may have come to an America's Youth Cup race earlier in the year or uh, maybe the uh, Florida State regattas where there were some vendors or some food vendors on the other side of the island there will not be that, uh, or excuse me, on the other side of the course, 
there will not be those amenities there uh, for this regatta as we are back on the island. Um, there's also some construction that's going on in the parking area over there that may or may not have started by then. Uh, so that could be an issue as well. Um, and in terms of tenting, uh, I do not believe, Sarah, you may know a firm answer to that. I do not believe you can set up a tent on the other side of the, uh, on the other side of the course. Right. That that's correct. And the only thing I'll add to is please wait for another update tomorrow regarding spectator tickets. Um, some items could change within that, but yes, no tents in any spectator area. Uh, there was a question about passports. Uh, we're not asking for passports uh, and we are not uh, actually taking that information. Um, that information is all held within uh, the COVID officer within the team. Let's see. Uh, Greg, regarding vaccinated coxswains, uh, if the boat is fully vaccinated, as is in the uh, the return to training rules uh, or guidelines, excuse me, uh, that we published and, and updated a couple weeks ago, um, if coxswains are part of a fully vaccinated boat and they are fully vaccinated, then they do not wear uh, need to wear a mask and eye protection one on the water. Is there an area on the beach that athletes can watch their teammates race or do they need to buy a ticket? No, they can watch their teammates race. Um, there is, I'm trying to get to that slide right now, but it's frozen on me. Um, there is an area. So it's just, there will be a section of the beach that is within the athlete coach and essential staff area. And that's where everybody will watch. Um, athletes do not need to buy spectator tickets. And let me, now that I have this. So again, this yellow line is the division on the beach between spectator and athlete. So athletes, again, have big tents right here for shade, open aired tents, and teams will be able to go ahead and cheer on their teammates in this area. Uh, will there be ergs on site for athletes to warm up once on the island? There will not be any ergs provided. So if you need an erg, it should be brought. Uh, if af athletes are housing with their families, am I responsible for daily COVID checks for parents or siblings as well? No, you are not. Just for your athletes and your, um, unless they are um, part of your, part of your uh, uh, team support staff, um, then no, you would not be. If you're sharing, sharing a trailer with multiple teams, uh, will we all have room to spread out? Yes, you will have room. Uh, where do teams park? More information about that will be coming from Sanka, um, but there will be an offsite location where you will park and spectators will have an offsite location with, um, with yeah, being able to shuttle back and forth. I had another question about the trailers and the spacing. Uh, how are teams going to be kept separate if uh, they have more than one team on the same trailer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sanka is doing their best to completely give each team their designated space. So it is the intention that there will be space for everyone. Um, again, there are many, many, many teams registered. So we're trying to do that as much as possible. Um, but it is the intention to give each team as much space. If you have two boats, you might not get as much space if you have 20 boats. Um, and a trailer on top of that. But there is going to be an area where you can designate as your own. Uh, if an athlete has had a positive test in the past 80 days, has been cleared to participate and has no symptoms, are they exempt from COVID testing prior to arrival? Right now they are not, uh, Christopher, but we will go back to, our, to the medical committee and get clarification on that. Um, so, if that does change, uh, we will put that in, a, in an update to the COVID guidelines. Uh, but right now, uh, per the guidance, uh, they, would need to, they would need to test. Um, but I will, I will get back to you on, on that information if there's any updates. Where can the COVID credential roster be found? To whom do we submit it? And when does it need to be submitted by? Mm -hmm. 
So you can find that on the website right now, um, on the U.S. Rowing website, and you will go ahead and download that. You'll fill it out. It's on an Excel file, and you will send it to events team at usrowing.org. That needs to be submitted by, Brett, correct me, June 8th or June 9th? The date uh, is slipping Yes, it's, June it's, 9th. it's June 9th at 5 p.m. at the latest, uh, um, if you haven't arrived on venue, but it's due when you arrive on venue or by 5 p.m. on June 9th at the latest. Yep, thank you. Yeah, so that's that's in the inbox by at the latest June 9th, and then you're also bringing a copy of it with you too. Um, but again, on our website, you can find it. Uh, Jeffrey, bow-loaded coxswains are not required to wear eyewear protection. It's only for stern cox uh, boats. Uh, tents off island on the west side of the course. I think you already answered that one. No tents. Uh, how is practice going to be run on Tuesday and Wednesday? Mm-hmm. So more information will be coming out. You can find the exact practice times on the packet that's posted right now or the email that went out via James. Um, but again, there will be some updates and potentially some changes for the Wednesday practice schedule in the near future. Uh, Ian, yes, you can bring your own bike. Um, has the survey for designated the COVID officer been sent yet? It's not a survey. Uh, the designation of the COVID officer is up to you. And then, uh, as Sarah mentioned about the actual form that needs to be turned in. Sounds like the traditional parking areas will be utilized by trailers this year. Will there be any handicap parking on the island? There will. Yes, there will be handicap um, parking on the island. And again, there will be shuttling from offsite as well. Can coaches watch in the spectator area? Anyone with a ticket can go into the spectator area, but if you do, if you do not have a ticket, you are not allowed in there. Um, so again, we're trying to keep that bubble like atmosphere, the coach, the essential staff and the athletes are viewing from that top portion of the beach or the coach is riding their bike down. Um, but there is no, a coach does not need a ticket. Um, you know, they're getting into the athlete area completely because they're a coach. That's what they need to be doing in there. Um, but nobody with a, without a ticket will be allowed into that spectator area at any point in time. Uh, do we need a ticket to watch races from the other side of the island? No, you do not. What about the car top shells and parking? Yeah, uh, the one thing I'd say to the other side too is again, more information to come out tomorrow. Um, in regards to car top shells and parking, there will be accommodations on the island for you. Depending on um, how many we end up having, um, you may be pulling off site, but we're, we're trying to finalize those details depending on the number of trailers coming in. And how will small teams with one or two boats, will there be a lay down area or rack area? There will not be racks. Um, it'll just be, it'll just be a lay down area. And again, every team will have their own specific area. I cannot promise that everybody's gonna have the exact amount of feet or the exact same amount of feet if you have two trailers versus if you have two boats. Um, but the goal is to at least give you your own little bubble out there. Are car top small boats allowed on site to have access to their gear? If the car is allowed on site? More to come on that, exactly. Um, I'm not in a position to answer that right now, but we are trying our best to do so and trying to keep all the numbers um, working in our favor. Confirming that fully vaccinated crews and coxswains do not need mask and eye protection during the race. Crews do not need, uh, rowers do not need uh, masks during the race at all. Uh, stern cox, cox, Fully vaccinated coxswains of Stern Cox boats uh, do not need mask or eye protection during the race. That is correct. We are trailing several teams. If another team we are carrying has a COVID problem, will our team be subject to exclusion? Uh, that will come down to contact tracing, Greg. So if you're just trailing the boats, uh, in all likelihood not. Um, 
and the contact tracing issue, uh, it's if you're close contact uh, for 15 minutes uh, with an individual who uh, has been, uh, has a confirmed case of COVID. Um, so as long as you're spacing in the area around your trailer and not having uh, sustained contact with another team, uh, in all likelihood, you'll be okay. Will the spectator parking area be for ticketed spectators or can anyone be able to park there? It will be for anyone. And we've already answered the no tents on the uh, west side of the course. So only the COVID officer has access to the health of the info unless there is an audit. That is correct, Wendy. What credentials will the athletes need for practice on Tuesday or Wednesday? Uh, the COVID officer will need to check in and get the credentials before the teams can come on to practice. Can a team of two arrive with boats on a car top? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, a few minutes ago, you said that Stern Coxons only don't need the mask covering if the entire crew is vaccinated. Is it the entire crew or just the Cox? It is the entire crew needs to be vac vaccinated. I'll be bringing a scholar for the following week's U23 trials. Will he be allowed any access during the week of youth racing? Is the question, will they be have access to the island? Or access to the course. I'm assuming it means island. And if that's the case, if, if then I would consider that person essential staff if they have a role there. And that's the only way that they would become, be able to get onto the athlete spec or the athlete area. And Ian, I'll add to that. I know uh, Mike Zimmer has been talking with James about uh, some dedicated practice time for uh, people coming to trials the next week outside of uh, the venue opening hours. So more to come on that. If a parent of us is part of our support stuff and has bought a spectator ticket, how does that work? is in that needs to be in the athlete area they do not need a spectator ticket they will be again on that roster and can just stay in the athlete essential staff and coach area um so that person you know just email me and we can work something out and we can make that ticket available um but they do not need a spectator ticket everybody should be completely separate we're trying to again keep it as bubble like as possible what days, hours will the U.S. Rowing check-in tent be open to pick up credentials? Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, so I'm, I can't 100% commit to it right now, but that information will be made 100% available at the CNC meeting coming up. Um, but we'll be there for, for a good long while. So you'll have plenty of opportunities. Uh, are off-island tents on the west side allowed? Uh, no, they are not. Are family members allowed in the island? And if not, is there any restrictions on the other side of the island that they can, and can they bring their bikes? So no, it, you, if you, there's two scenarios where you can be on the island. One, again, if you're on the team roster area, uh, which is essential staff, coaches, and athletes. I think so many of you have heard me say that so many times this year, um, but that is the athlete area. The second area is a spectator area that you are only getting in if you're ticketed. So those are the two options of being on that island. The other side of it, more information to come, but as of right now, that is not US rowing. Um, we cannot monitoring it at, we cannot monitor it as of this moment. Um, so they, that would be an area. Um, but again, it, you, there's no scenario where a parent would able to be casually walking into the athlete area. 
If one of our support staff has a child who needs to come with them, do we list them on our roster or are they not allowed? Yes, they should be listed on your roster. Definitely. Will these rules generally apply to trials as well? Uh, no, trials will have separate rules, uh, separate COVID policy. I do not know if that's been published yet. Uh, I would definitely check the trial site or reach out to Mike Zimmer about uh, what the uh, what the COVID rules will be for trials. Service and support animals welcome on the island. Yes. Are the island or the on island off island times sample schedule a recommendation or is this a hard rule? So very good question. Um, it is enforced as much as possible. So I guess the answer is no, it's not a absolutely hard rule. We're not going to be going in and checking our watch and making sure that you're leaving, but we are again, trying to keep the flow going as much as possible. So if an athlete is not racing, if they raced at 8 a.m. and they're not racing again that afternoon, it is the expectation that they're gone. Um, but if they have two races and they're relatively close, like, yes, please stay on. Um, again, we're not monitoring it to the minute, but again, it's the expectation that everybody's working for each other um, and getting off, to the, off the island as much as possible. Uh, what are the opening and closing hours for entrance to the venue? Is there accommodation for trailers arriving late Monday afternoon? Yep, so that information will be coming out via Sanka. We have a meeting tomorrow to finalize all the hours of everything. Um, so look for an email of, again, entrance to the venue, US Rowing registration tent and practice times coming soon. Will there be a designated area for parents to drive up and drop off their athletes so they can enter the island? Yes, right, there's there's a there's a drop off location in the where buses drop off uh, in the half circle um, as you come into the island. So yes, that is where the drop off location would be for parents as well. Can a sport uh, can a support staff credential be shared? No, has your name on it, so it's yours. <laughs> Again, if anybody that needs to be on the support staff list, it's they're on the roster and they're on the roster way prior to or three, at least 72 hours prior to arriving on site. Um, so that is yours. It is not transferable. It is not ripped off or giving to somebody else. It is only yours and it should never leave. Is there a screen in the coach athlete beach area so they can see the finish? There will be a jumbotron that's located in the spectator area, but it'll be viewable um, from both. So there will be a, a jumbotron there. Uh, can we throw the documents of the team roster into the chat? Uh, yes, we will try to do that. I'll send an email out. Um, I can send an email out tomorrow morning with the recording and all the documents. Um, I can't get to the chat right now, but expect that tomorrow. Uh, can coaches watch their career be awarded a medal if they don't have a spectator's ticket? Good question. So there will not be, um, at this point in time, again, we are in a forever changing COVID world. At this point in time, we don't have big medal ceremonies. So we are trying to keep it as, um, you know, limit all the gathering points as possible. That could very much change um, as we get there. But if there was an athlete award area, it would not be within the spectator area because we are separating the two. Um, so the answer to your question is like, yes, the coach would be able to because then the coach would um, have full access to them. So to be determined on that exact process, it's gonna be determined by what the medical commission says and what continues to change. Um, but yes, the coach will have access to the, the athletes. Uh, is there a charge to park? There will not be a charge to park, no. Uh, question about when parking passes will be available? That information will come out um, with Sanka once we have more of the, the exact dates of when everything will be available. So expect that by the end of this week. Are the practice Wednesdays going to be lengthened? I don't see how it's possible. They're safe uh, to put 800 entries on the island after on the island water in a four hour window. 
to be determined on that. Again, that's something that we're looking into making more available um, and potentially having two options on certain days. Um, so again, more information to come there, but we're, we definitely hear you. We're, we're trying to do as best as we can there. Uh, to whom do we communicate regatta concerns? Is there a specific contact at U.S. Rowing, schedules, rules, et cetera? Is there a committee or who is the point of contact? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for this event, um, I am taking all of the on-land stuff. So you can send any COVID questions, any um, you know parking, all of those details will be coming for me. Um, James Rawson, who's our director of events, will be in charge of the you know your entries and your scratches and anything like that. Um, so you can do any scheduling questions to James. Uh, will the recording be available offline? Yep. So after this, I'll send a, you guys the recording tomorrow morning. Um, I'll edit it and send it over and you'll have this. And please send it out to everyone. We want everybody to, to make sure they're fully educated on the process. Uh, when does registration open to pick up wristbands? More information to come on those exact times. Are you going to update these COVID rules with CDC regulations as they change? Uh, we're going to try not to do much updating to this. Uh, we want a lot of people have already registered for the regatta under uh, these current rules. If there's significant changes, then we would uh, do that. And there may be some slight tweaks to things, uh, but um, that, that this is hopefully this is where we're at with the rules. So athletes and coaches aren't allowed to watch the other races in the athlete area and aren't allowed in the spectator bubble either. So essentially they can't watch races on islands. There is a part, there is a beach area in the spect in the athlete area where coaches can watch races. Um, and then uh, the bike path on the other side of the, of the course is also available, but the two pads closest to the wave attenuator, uh, as Sarah showed on uh, on the venue map are to the left of that yellow line uh, are open for athletes and coaches to view racing uh, when they're on venue. Is there any chance that U.S. Rowing will cancel this regatta? <laughs> I mean, and unless something drastic right. happens, I would I would not expect that to happen now. We're all very excited. Uh, will there be any additional spectator tickets being sold since they sold out within four minutes? Uh, I think Sarah's answered this a couple of times uh, earlier that more information potentially tomorrow. We may have to bring an alter. Do you know if I can put in a late entry in for her or is this a James question? Yes, go ahead and um, please send that to James. You can CC us as well too. We can, we can help with all of that. Will there be additional porta potty set up for spectators off the island? There will be plenty of restrooms for spectators. Yes, but on the island, not across from the island. There are no facilities on the opposite side at this time. In addition to the recording, could you please distribute the slide deck of this presentation? Yes. Can a spectator ticket be shared while not being used? No, the spectator tickets cannot be shared amongst people. Will each team have their own porta potty? Each team will have as close, well, depending on numbers. And again, this, this exact wording is coming up from Sanka um, with our confirmation packet in the next, uh, by the end of this week. Um, but yes, as close as possible. There are some scenarios where there's just a few of you as car toppers. And in that scenario, we can look at other options. But again, more information to come there. Uh, what is the spectator ticket price? 
It's $75 for four days. So there's not a day option pass, but it's $75 for all four days there. Check the chat here. How much space will we give them to trailers with multiple teams? It's a popular question. Again, this will be coming out in the confirmation packet, the exact details there. Um, we are trying to give as much bubble space to each team, even if you are on a trailer with somebody else as possible, um, but more information to come on that end. A first dose vaccine, does a first dose vaccine constitute a vaccinated athlete? No, um, it's two weeks, 14 days post the final shot of your vaccination sequence. So if it's Pfizer or Moderna, it's 14 days after your second shot. If it's J&J, &J, it's 14 days after your single shot. Uh, can you share with us the guidance um, regarding sunglasses that will qualify as eye protection? Yeah, Kobe, I can uh, go to the CDC site and find that and uh, we can put, post that on the site as well. Mm -hmm. Will there be volunteers for the event? Yes, there are volunteers for the event. And volunteers will be part of um, the staff and LOC COVID protocols. We are traveling on a vendor's trailer with other teams who covers the COVID compliance for that driver. Um, For our vendors, U.S. Rowing will be handling uh, vendor compliance for the COVID protocols, um, depending on whether the vendor is in the spectator area or whether that vendor is in the athlete area. So there will be uh, there will be boat manufacturers uh, and other uh, uh, manufacturers like NK and or and, and service manufacturers in the athlete area. They will all have to follow the COVID protocols for being in the athlete area and U.S. Rowing will monitor those. Um, in, terms of, in terms of driving your boats to the venue, um, you guys should be working with that person to make sure that they're, they're compliant before they leave. We'll be making sure that they're compliant when they're on site. Um, is there any access to water on the island? Teams should expect to bring their own. Is the requirement for the COVIS officer to be on the island at all times or only during their team's events? Um, they do not need to be on island at all times. Uh, they need to be contactable if we need to contact them. Uh, and they should have access to the uh, athlete area, but they do not need to be uh, on venue at all times. Mm -hmm. There was another question about passports. I think Sarah may have said something like passport uh, when she was talking about the spectator VIP area. Um, we are not asking people to provide passports. Uh, again, uh, VIP spectators who are fully vaccinated are permitted to take off their mask when they're there. We will not be uh, asking them to show their, uh, to show their vaccination card uh, or any sort of vaccination passport. Will coaching vehicles be allowed to park on the island? Coaching, some tow vehicles will be able to park, but again, more to come on that. Uh, is there a limit to how many spectator tickets can be purchased? Uh, right now we are sold out and uh, I think more information is coming tomorrow. Anything to add on that, Sarah? Nope, you summed it up. <laughs> All right.
I think we have answered, well, we've got another. The home COVID test is accessible. That is correct. So I think we've answered all the questions. Awesome. If there has to be an injury substitution, what will you need from us? Um, the person will have to be on your roster. We'll have to have cleared all the COVID product protocols. And then injury substitution would be, um, would follow the regular injury substitution within the rules of rowing, depending on whether racing has started or uh, whether race is, uh, or whether it has not started yet. And just to be clear, visitors can also bark, uh, bike on the west side. It's a public park, so um, I think the lower bike path is closed for just coaches, but the upper path is public. Is that correct, Sarah? Yes, as of this moment, but that could change as of tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, can coaches row early in the mornings before racing? Uh, the when the ven when we have the venue, nobody else is allowed to be on the venue for rowing. So no, uh, when uh, in the morning you would not be allowed to row as a coach. I like the ambition though. All right. Is that everything? I think so. Awesome. Well, like I said, I will go ahead um, and post these tomorrow. I'll get you guys the recording, the slides, um, and the documentation of the roster and, and the signed copy that I need from you. If you have anything, go ahead and email me. Um, James, again, his email is james.rawson at usrowing.org. So go ahead and send it to both of us. Um, and like I said, more of the exact times will be coming up by the end of this week as we finalize some details with Sanka. Um, but thank you guys so much. Thanks for being involved in so many of these COVID calls. Um, we really appreciate your flexibility and patience with everything. Um, but otherwise, I hope you guys have a good night.